This week in Jamaica Now, Chopped, regulator bans music promoting drugs and other crimes from radio and TV. Two sisters allegedly raped and left for dead, now recovering. No bail, a court rules that the cop in the Donnelly Donaldson case should remain in custody. And... I have passed the stage of trying to, you know, or needing to win political popularity and favour. I have to start to think about legacy. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he's now focused on his political legacy. I'm Jovan Johnson and this is Jamaica Now. A debate involving censorship and free speech has erupted in Jamaica after state regulators imposed a ban on the playing of certain kinds of music on free-to-air radio and television stations. On Tuesday, the Broadcasting Commission of Jamaica, BCJ, announced the immediate ban on the playing of music that, among other things, promotes or glorifies lottery scamming, the use of the illicit drug molly, and illegal guns. The commission said the use of the public airwaves to broadcast songs that promote or glorify illegal activity could give the impression that criminality is an accepted feature of Jamaican culture and society. Now, attorney at law Matthew Royal believes that the BCJ's decision raises a number of potential constitutional issues. I think a key issue would be what amounts to promoting or glorifying scamming. How do we know whether something that refers to scamming or refers to um, one of those prohibited kind of conduct is promoting or glorifying it as opposed to just art reflecting realities of the daily life? So, for example, if I build a song about um, being able to go to school because my father is a scammer, am I promoting and glorifying scamming or am I merely reflecting in art my daily realities? Cultural expert Professor Carolyn Cooper said any attempt to curb illicit activities in Jamaica was welcomed, but she argued that the government must focus on what she called the more difficult task to tackle social problems at the root of criminality. Minister with the Responsibility for Information, Robert Morgan, says the BCJ's action is about standards. A lot of us, including members of the media, have complained over the past several years about the type of content that they hear on the airwaves. And let's give a scenario. My office is in front of Clarendon College. So a child walks to the gate of Clarendon College. They, they go on a bus. Chopping songs, Molly songs. They come off the bus a little bit up the road, on Pond Road. Somebody's playing a radio. Chopping songs, Molly songs. They go home, the uncle is playing a radio. Chopping songs, Molly songs. We have a responsibility for the spaces that we control to set the standard and set an example. We're not fettering people's right to free speech. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has defended his administration's action to demolish 10 incomplete structures on lands adjacent to the Clifton community in the Greater Bernard Lodge development area in St. Catherine. He argued in the House of Representatives on Tuesday that if the government did not act, it would have led to a massive land grab engineered by a criminal organization. The government has faced backlash over its actions with opposition leader Mark Golding declaring that the People's National Party would help persons affected by the demolition of the unoccupied structures. Mr. Holness says the sugar company Holdings of Jamaica, the government company that manages the property, sought intervention. It was brought to my attention that SCJ staff were fearful of acting as there were reports of organized criminal activity in the area and a possible connection to the Klansman gang in the area. On July 20, the Sugar Company of Jamaica wrote to me explaining that the matter was out of control and could not be dealt with safely at the local level. Following that, the matter was brought to the attention of the National Security Council. Can you imagine our state being afraid to act in the face of a gang? That I had to bring the matter to the National Security Council. And opposition member Fitz Jackson, who is the MP for the area, said he alerted the state company of the issue and later the Prime Minister. SCJ knew it all along. Others told them, I told them, as you said. 
what is happening there from last year, from it started. SCJ failed to do nothing about it. To the point that I alerted you that SCJ is, has been failing and continue to fail to do anything where a new community is springing up and I can't speak to it. Because I don't know about it. That's why I go to SCJ, who owns the land. It's their land, they are the government authority, and it's their duty and obligation to act. Meanwhile, Mr. Holness said the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency and the Jamaica Constabulary Force are investigating similar claims of land scams involving state lands in Mount Edgecombe in St. Anne, Retirement and Providence in St. James, and Naysbury Grove in St. Catherine. A 12-year-old girl and her 15-year-old sister, who were allegedly raped, stabbed and chopped multiple times in a pre-dawn attack at their home just over a week ago, are recovering in hospital. The accused man, who residents believe is in his 30s and reportedly has a violent history, is said to be well known in the community. To protect the victim's identities, we are not naming the area. The suspect's relatives have also reportedly removed themselves from the area out of fear of reprisal. The incident reportedly occurred sometime after 5 a.m. on September 30 as the girls were asleep at their home. They had relocated after their mother was killed execution style a few years ago. The girls were in the care and custody of their 23-year-old sister. Head of the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse, Senior Superintendent Maldred Jones-Williams says the matter was under investigation. 31-year-old St. Andrew chef Amar Fairweather, who murdered a 15-year-old schoolgirl in 2017, is to be sentenced on November 29. He reportedly had an intimate relationship with the girl. Mr. Fairweather pleaded guilty to murder under a plea deal in the Home Circuit Court on Wednesday. Mr. Fairweather, who had been on the run before he was captured in 2020, reportedly murdered Jose Marte Technical High School student Denise Hume at her home in Seaview Gardens in Kingston after she sent him a text message ending their relationship. He pleaded not guilty to illegal possession of firearm and illegal possession of ammunition, and so the case against him on those charges will continue to trial. A court has rejected Constable Noel Maitland's application for bail, saying he would flee Jamaica to avoid being prosecuted for the murder of his girlfriend, Donnelly Donaldson. Supreme Court Justice Vinette Graham Allen said if the cop was granted bail, there was a likelihood he would abscond bail, interfere with witnesses, obstruct the investigation, or reoffend. The judge said there are no conditions that can adequately work against those actions. Mr. Maitland, who has been in custody since July 27, is charged with murder and preventing the lawful burial of a corpse. The woman's body has not been found. Mr. Maitland is to return to the Home Circuit Court for a plea and case management hearing on February 9 next year. Local anti-corruption watchdog National Integrity Action wants public disclosure and explanation on how billions of dollars in assets forfeited to the government under the Proceeds of Crime Act are being managed and divested. The call follows a Sunday Gleaner report about a court order obtained by the Financial Investigations Division that stripped Jamaican drug boss and ex-policeman Andrew Hamilton of half of his $1 billion portfolio of assets. Fourteen multi-million dollar homes, four motor vehicles, four bulldozers and a bank account with $19 million cash are among the nearly two dozen assets worth over $500 million which Mr. Hamilton recently turned over to the state. He did so in compliance with an order by the Supreme Court. The FID says it is currently managing over $1.8 billion in assets forfeited to the government via the Proceeds of Crime Act, including real estate, motor vehicles and cash. It says another $1 billion in assets are currently restrained or frozen by court orders. The National Integrity Action says the FID should disclose and explain fully to the public the criteria on which the forfeited assets are being disposed of or managed. A special fact-finding team established to probe the status of Jamaicans participating in Canada's Seasonal Agricultural Workers Program is now in the North American country. The government established the team months after some farm workers in Canada disputed a claim from Labour Minister Carl Samuda that working conditions there were good. The team is led by President of the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions, Helene Davis-White. She said approximately 70 farms have been selected for visits over a two-week period. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. 
follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page, turn on your notification and subscribe today. I'm Joven Johnson and before we go, why was the Prime Minister emotional about his legacy on October 12th? If you allow development to happen everywhere, and then all of a sudden now everybody say they want water, they want light, they want internet. Government never budget for it, government never even know about it. Which is what is happening now. There are many communities that just evolved. And then people are saying we need light, we need water. That property that you occupy, are you paying property tax? How the light and water come? You in your little property will pay your property tax. Some of that has to go to communities that just sprung up. For decades we have been winking and being duplicitous and equivocal about the enforcement of the rule of law. And that is why we are where we are today. My job as your Prime Minister, I've passed the stage of trying to, you know, or needing to win political popularity and favor. Doesn't matter to me anymore. I have to start to think about legacy. What will Jamaica be? Will it be the same as I came and saw it? I can't let Jamaica be the same as I came and saw it.